Ladies and gentlemen, Jesson Shredder here, and welcome back to another XCOM 2 War of the Chosen setup video. Now, last we left, uh, well, last we left off, we finished the Advent Civil War, and where one campaign ends, another one must rise to take its place, because XCOM 2 is an amazing game with shit tons of replayability to it, so... Because of mods, mainly, but it still has a lot of replayability, even... If it's reliant on mods, it doesn't really matter. And as you can see, we have a mod here called the XCOM 2 RPG Overhaul mod. I have no idea why it's called that, but long story short, the whole idea of... Let me turn this up a little bit. Hopefully it won't be too much, because I remember in the last time I did a uh, pre-campaign setup video, the music I chose was a lot was really, you know, like loud, you know, it was too loud for the video to be actually, for me to be actually heard. Well, this is okay, I chose the, uh, I guess it's like the final theme music for the, uh, XCOM Enemy Within soundtrack, because like plays at the final mission, I can't remember, I haven't played XCOM Enemy Unknown for like forever. Uh, maybe I'll get, uh, get back to it, but anyway... So pretty much this RPG overhaul is going to be the main factor of this mod because pretty much it completely redesigns the idea of classes. And instead of just stripping the vanilla classes and you know adding a different one like the Tac Pro class pack did during the Advent Civil War, it completely redesigns it because as you can see from this one here, there are like a million more uh, skills to be chosen here and if you look very closely you can see a scroll bar here and what that means is that the idea of predetermined classes like pre-set up classes has been completely eliminated and if we scroll down here we see a bunch of these required mods uh, utility slot sidearms or long or two secondary weapons, primary secondaries. If you didn't get the gist here, it means that every single soldier can use any combination of weapons. The only weapons that cannot be swapped around are the Reaper Claymores and the Templar Psy Gauntlet thingies. And uh, you know, the Psy Gauntlet thingies kind of make sense because you kind of need psionic power you need to be gifted in psionics let me put this over bs i did uh you need to be gifted in psionics to actually use those so that makes sense and reaper claymores i don't know but i just haven't seen them in the secondary slots i could just be talking out of my ass but anyway and pretty much how this works is everybody still starts as a recruit, but when they get their first promotion, so let's say after the gate crasher, when my four soldiers complete the mission, hopefully four, you know, you never know, someone could get clapped, but uh, pretty much after, th there's th after the soldiers get their first promotion, after gate crasher, for example, where they get, when they go from re recruit to squatty, they will gain two random abilities, for example, you know, hunker down, deep cover, or like if you move, if you t spent all your actions on running, you get a free hunker down. You know, that it could be deep cover, lightning reflexes, uh, cyber adepts, anything. And after that, they can gain any combination of skills, they can use any combination of weapons they want in order to, kick, to kind of mold their class. And as they get more abilities, their class will change. Like for example, everybody starts as a soldier at, at Squatty. They get their two random abilities, and from those two random abilities, you can, you can kind of go from there and develop their class from there. Like for example, if they get Juggernaut plus two HP and Lightning Reflexes were the first reaction fire against them will miss, you might want to make an assault build from like Long War 2, and you can actually do that. Because Long War 2 secondary weapons, you have a shotgun primary and a uh, stun gun and arc thrower secondary. And with that, you can get other abilities like run and gun, 
aggression, uh, killer instincts, all of that. Uh, everything that makes a long war to assault, a long war to assault. And you can do other combinations too. You can have like a vector rifle, grenade launcher. And the crazy thing is you could put secondary weapons in the utility slot. All right, so you can have like a vector rifle primary, grenade launcher secondary, and I don't know, a sword in your utility slot. Although that'll kind of look weird because the sword and the grenade launcher are holstered on the back and that kind of, you know, clip into each other and yeah, and speaking of which, ability points are also uh, completely redone because as you can see here, you can actually directly affect the stats of your soldiers. It does cost ability points, as you can see here, and as you get more and as you increase that skill more, or as that skill gets greater, it will cost more ability points. So you can't just spend, you know, two AP, two ability points to get one point of aim every single time now about the ra about the five tick mark about the around the five mark it increases to four or whatever i could be talking out of my ass again i don't know the exact numbers i can't remember but uh long story short the way this ability system works is that every level up you get a free ability and every other ability costs 30 action points no matter if it's rupture matter if it's lightning ends doesn't matter what the ability is it costs 30 ability points every secondary ability that is and pretty much you can build super soldiers trust me it gets really really OP by the end game in during my uh, overall testing that I'm doing like you know making sure all the mods work with each other <laughs> I got some pretty crazy builds on uh, that run, and, <laughs> and there is no limit. The only, I guess, the only limit is is your ability points, obviously. But in terms of what classes you can get, like obviously, as you can see here, there are some prerequisites. Prerequisites. Like, there's even like a skirmisher line, right? Where like you can actually give a non-hero class soldier access to the ripjack and make it impromptu skirmisher or you can start giving them claymore abilities and make a reaper the only hero class you can't really make is again the templar which is again makes sense because you actually need the psionic gift to use the to be a templar obviously and speaking of hero classes Hero classes aren't affected by this mega uh, skill tree. Neither are Sparks or Psy Operatives. They are not changed in any way. And as you can see, there's an extra rank here. And what I've noticed, hero classes have a bit of a bug. Where because they only still go up to Cornel. 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 And uh, they, they, they only go up to this rank. So it kind of glitches out when they reach this rank because because of the mod, it thinks that they keep on getting leveled up leveled up to, to, to the new rank, but because that doesn't exist for hero classes, they like always get a level up after every mission once they reach max rank. It'll be better displayed when we get into the actual game. I mean, it's just a little thing. It's not a game-breaking bug by far. It's just something small that I just have to deal with. <laughs> at the late game but overall this mod adds some very good flexibility and i love this freedom i have with my soldiers i mean yeah it does get overpowered but hey that's the thing with xcom easy in the early game hard hard in the early game easy in the late game right anyway that's about it for the main uh, effector here if we go over here to my mod list, we have some reoccurring enemies. In terms of enemies, we have some uh, yeah, some new faces. Then we have some old faces, for example. Mox and the Advent Warlock are making a comeback. So are Pathfinders. New enemies, we have Advent Psyops. Which, I mean, they're Advent Psyops. And it's not just like an Advent version of XCOM Psyops. These are like specialty soldiers. 
All I'll say is one of the Advent PsyOps is pretty much a copy paste of the Templar. So, so, so we could face enemy Templars on missions. That's not annoying at all, but I mean, it's a thing. And then Synthenoids. The thing with Synthenoids is that they're like, they're like pocket mechs. They're like mini mechs. They are the, the size of a normal soldier. And they look like a normal soldier. They're pretty much just cyborgs, right? And the thing about Synthenoids is that they don't have anything special in terms of their loadout. They just have an assault rifle and stuff. But the thing about them, they have like a built-in jetpack. So it's like every Synthenoid has is wearing Icarus armor. And they can, you know, they, they can jump up to rooftops easily. And at one point or another, they get the launch ability, which is pretty much the same as Icarus jump. So that could be annoying in terms of flank shots, but most of them don't live anyway. They they are pretty squishy, you know. They are about as squishy as normal advent troopers. And the thing is, they explode when they die, like purifier. So I shouldn't go in there and let's say a fortress on the temple. I don't know. Do not trust melee and synthenoids. I've learned the hard way. <laughs> anyway. There are more Advent PsyOps than just the Templar version, but I won't spoil anything else for you. And, and in terms of everything else, I got all my normal UI stuff. I got some map packs. I got an enemy within slash unknown map remake, which is pretty cool. You know, that brings back the nostalgic... Nostalgia, fuck. That brings back the feels. And game changers, we have, you know, you know the normal stuff. Ruler reactions revisited, reliable... Old your army miscellaneous got customizable Sky Ranger. I might change the Sky Ranger from Advent Avenger to something else just to mix it up. And overall, that's about it for the overhaul mod list and the overall playthrough in general. And as always, viewer submitted characters will always be accepted. I recommend you do it in this video though. Because once I start the playthrough, it's going to be a little bit harder to get viewer characters in. I apologize for that, but that's just the way it is. Because normally when I start recording, I record like four to six episodes in advance. So it gets increasingly harder to get viewer characters in. But if you do it now, during the setup video, and you just explain your children in the comments below, then you'll be in the character pool before the campaign even starts. And you'll have the maximum random... RNG chance to get in and I do have recruits conserved character pool on as the mod so there is a chance they'll come up as a soldier reward so there you go and that being said that's about it and it's kind of funny because this uh, setup video is being uploaded the same night as the war as the advent civil war uh, finale comes out so I mean there you go I mean uh, I'll upload it tonight you guys will have Friday to kind of watch, get it settled in. Any viewer requests can come in. And then Friday night, I will start record, or tomorrow night, or t t earlier today, and by the time you're watching this, I will start recording the playthrough. I hope you guys are excited for this playthrough. I sure am. I mean, like I said, I love the freedom this mod gives during the testing, it was amazing. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to call it here for the day. Any questions about the mod list, please do ask. I will gladly answer any questions about any of the mods that I'm running. Now, just one last look for you guys. If you want, and, uh, I'm going to stop talking now. Hopefully the music is okay, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Peace.